Heavenly Father, Lord, I just want to thank you for this night. I thank you for bringing us together. I thank you for the people who are turning, tuning in, Father, uh, to hear your word. I just pray that these words would uh, come out clearly, Father, that they would sink in and that you would uh, touch lives, Father. And I just thank you and praise you for all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> So last week, we were finishing off. They, they worked, everyone was working equally together, whether they were the, the goldsmith, the perfumer, even the cupbearer. They were all working together to do one thing, as to build a wall to protect each person. And it ended up not being just for that one person. They was working, helping others, helping to do other areas, just like we're called to do, help and support each other. So, oops. So let's go ahead and begin in chapter 4, verse 1. It says, But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we built the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren, the army of Samaria, and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. So now we have the enemies of Jerusalem, Sanballat from Samaria in the north, Tobiah and the Ammonites were in the east. They've also got the Arabians who are in the southwest and the Ashdodites from the southwest. The people of Jerusalem were surrounded and had good reason to fear, just like you and me. We face fear all the time. I fear that I've missed something that God's asked me to do. I fear that a lot, because there's a lot of times I think that I'm too busy thinking of what I need to do next instead of paying attention to what God wants me to do right now. One thing that a lot of people will fear is death. <laughs> I, I'm not fearing death because I know where I'm going to go. I'm going to go to heaven. But I do kind of fear the what I'm going to leave behind, my family. Because I know I'm a big part of the support. So when I'm not here, who's going to support them? Well, that's going to be them and their faith with Jesus. And that's what I am trying to help my family, and I know lots of you are, trying to help your family grow them in their faith, help them to be strong. Because we're not, we're not meant to be here forever. Eventually we'll be with, with our Lord, be in heaven. So, You know, there's always two sides to everything. <clears throat> and in our mind, we're, we're thinking of both things. We're thinking of the good things, and then we're thinking of the bad things that can happen. And, you know, those, the first things of God, the second, that's more something of the devil something that he tries to put those negative thoughts in our heads. Same thing he's been doing with the people in Jerusalem. The enemy is very good at what he does. He's good at taking this little tiny grain of sand and make it look like it's a big mountain when all it is is a grain of sand and we just need to step over it. But he'll put it in our mind to make us think it's impossible. And that's something that, if we can remember, 
Nothing's impossible with God. God can do all things. And he's not picking the most mighty people. He's picking the people that no one else would to go do his work because he knows you can do it through his strength. So how can we stand up to the devil? In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, <clears throat> it says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Without Jesus Christ, we can do nothing. He is our stronghold. 2 Samuel, verse 22, 1 through 4. And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, the God of my rock and him I will trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my Savior. Thou savest me from violence. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. In 2 Samuel, same chapter 21 through 23, the Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands hath he recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me. And as for his statutes, I did not depart from them. <clears throat> you see, God wants us to trust him. Trust God to keep you safe in your time of need. I don't mean that nothing's going bad can happen to us. You shouldn't go into a dark alley in a bad area and pick a fight with some crazy people and that can really hurt you. I'm not saying go do that. But I'm asking you to trust Jesus. Trust him to be by your side. Because he's there. He's waiting for you to call on him. We see David, just like Nehemiah, quick to pray, and to do it with faith, and leave the rest up to God, and move forward in the direction you believe God has directed you. Nehemiah is a good, he's a good shepherd. He's leading God's flock. He is helping them understand that coming together as one is safer and stronger, and together they can get a lot done. And all they needed was a little faith in God. That's all we need in order for us to do a lot of mighty things. No matter what Sen Ballad is doing, whether trying for his intimidation or just fear, Sen Ballad, first, he's trying to verbally just get into their heads. Same way the devil gets into my head. He gets a little bit, and a little bit more, and a little bit more, and before you know it, you don't think you can do anything. Um, see, people become so fearful that they can't even do anything. He tells them, what will they fortify? How they're gonna, are they just gonna keep sacrificing? How can be a sense that they can sacrifice enough to persuade God to help them rebuild the wall? Nehemiah is, he is a really good example. We just need to pray and trust and believe in God, knowing he is with us and move forward and do his will. Verse four, hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. <clears throat> and cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee. For they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So we see here the prayer 
little bit different prayer. Not asking for help for him. He's asking God for the for his enemy's destruction. It's not something that I would be praying for, but you know, asking, but Nehemiah, he's got a he's got a way about him. A little different than the rest. We also see this kind of prayer, um, like for instance in Psalms twenty eight. Uh, David cries out to God, first giving praise to the Lord. And then in verse 4 and 5, he's asking God to give them according to their deeds, according to their wickedness. I know when I was reading this, the thing that just kept coming to my mind um, is I I fall back to um, turning the other cheek. In Lamentations, Chapter 3, verse 30. Let them turn the other cheek to those who strike them and accept in the insults of their enemies. Matthew five thirty nine. But I say, do not resist an evil person. If someone slaps you on the right cheek, offer the other cheek also. In Luke six twenty nine, If someone slaps you on one cheek, offer the other cheek also. If someone demands your coat, offer him your shirt also. See, we see totally different views of how to think of our enemies. I myself, I'm going to f- follow God and all the way. I'm going to try to turn the other cheek, leaving the vengeance up to the Lord. In Ezekiel 25:17, it says, I will execute terrible vengeance against them to punish them for what they have done. And when I have inflicted my revenge they will know that I am the Lord. God is well known, whether for his love, for his grace, for his mighty power. In Hebrews 12, 24, we we see that you have come to Jesus, the one who meditates the new covenant between God and people and to the sprinkled blood which speaks of forgiveness instead of crying out for vengeance like the blood of Abel. See, we do not, we do not know why Nehemiah is praying the way he did for the vengeance of his enemies. But for us having the whole word of God, the Old, Old Testament, New Testament, we know vengeance is up to God. It's not up to us. We're told in Galatians 5.14, for the whole law can be summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. We see a lot of, a lot of things about God. He is ready to take vengeance when it's needed. He is loving And all he wants to do, all he wants us to do is to love our neighbor. Love him as yourself. So I'm going to follow God the best I can. I'm going to try to be a good example. I'm going to show love to my my neighbor, the neighbor at the store, the one I meet at the gas station, even that guy that's behind me when I'm sitting at that light, that red light, and he's sitting there honking at me, telling me to get out of his way, I'm still going to try to love that guy. It's hard because tempers tend to flare up and get in the way, but that's where I just call on Jesus and start asking him for patience. (laughs) Asking him for patience. (laughs) Jesus showed his love for each one of us when he died on the cross, he died for me. Me, one of the wretched sinners that can't seem to get it right sometimes. Well, a lot of times, but um, God still forgives me for that. So verse 6. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. But it came to pass 
that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Astadites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, when they were, then they were very wroth and conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. So, you know, I don't know how, about, how you guys feel about this, but I know when my enemy's coming, a, coming after me, I have a hard time to think straight. It's hard to keep your thoughts focused. So that is why God tells us to be ready. In your time of trouble, you're not going to have to think about it. God's going to tell us. He'll give us the words, and he's there. But there's a problem if we don't first prepare ourselves by drawing close to God so we can hear when he's calling out our name. That's what we're doing here tonight, drawing close to the Lord, learning more about him. So when he's calling our name, we're going to hear him, and he's going to say, thank you, good and faithful servant, because we're doing what he wants. If we're reading God's word, praying, fellowshipping, then we're ready. When we tell our, our brothers and sisters about the trials that we go through, it helps them to prepare Prepare for when the attack comes to them. It also shows how that mighty hand of God is helping us to overcome those difficulties. Just like Nehemiah, the first, the first thing we need to do is pray. It might be just calling out, Jesus, I need help, or just get the name Jesus out. That's all you got to do. That's all you have to do. He's going to hear you. He's going to hear your voice, and he's going to be ready. So when I say God is my rock and my salvation, these are not just, they're not just words to me. They mean that I am safe, safe with Jesus by my side. I don't have to worry about so much. I know I still will because that's just who we are. We need to not, we need to not go around all stressed out because we've got our Lord. He's working miracles every day on our behalf. Bring our troubles to our Lord and leave them at his feet, trusting he's going to take care of it. Just like we see here with Nehemiah, he's doing a mighty work with them. Verse 10. And Judah said, the strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed, and there is much rubbish, so that we are not able to build the wall. And our adversaries said, they shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst of among them, and slay them, and cause the work to cease. And it came to pass, that when the Jews which dwelt by, by them came, they said unto us ten times, from all places whence you shall return unto us, they will be upon you. So we see Jerusalem is feeling the strain, strain of the world that's around them, the enemy telling them they're finished, they're coming, the enemy's coming. Even from within, they're telling them that they can't do it, it's done even their own people, beside them in their ear again and again. The enemy will come and overtake you. So you can't, I mean, they're, they're just telling them you can't do it. You're, you're going to die. Might as well just run away. Have you ever had any kind of thought like that? Maybe when you had to confront your past or 
thought was past that you thought was behind you, and then out of nowhere it gets thrown back in your face again. You have to deal with it. You know, trying to run, trying to uh, not face your past is a hard thing because it has a way of always coming back. And the Lord's going to do it because He wants you to grow. We didn't hear about Nehemiah's life before he became a cub bearer. He had to do a lot of growing in order for him to have that trust that he has in the Lord right now. He had to do a lot of growing because he's going through a lot and he's not showing signs of stress. He's not showing signs of having any difficulties. He gives a prayer up to the Lord and he steps forward because he knows the Lord's there to help him and protect him. So you see, the devil likes to play tricks on us and play with our minds. This is one of his favorite things, to plant those negative, those little negative seeds, if you will, which he likes to sit back in his planet and watch us because we tend to focus on that little bad thing and then it just smolders and smolders and turns into the big flame. And he just likes to watch us self-destruct. But when you have these little issues, if you just turn to the Lord, Lord, I need you. I need your help. I can't let go. I can't let it go. In Psalm 37, 1 through 4, it says, A Psalm of David, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shall thou dwell in the land and verify thou shall be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of the lambs. They shall consume into smoke, shall they consume away. The wicked watcheth the righteous, and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord, and keep his way, and he shall exaltly exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. And in Psalms 37, 38 through 40, but the transgressors shall be destroyed together, and the end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them he shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. We see Nehemiah really has, he looks like he's got his act together. He knows when to pray. Pray for everything. He knows how to handle the enemy. Put it in God's hands and trust he has it under control. And then move on with business it your business at hand. We just need to always, always ask God what to do, then do it. If it's not what God wanted, He'll let you know. He'll let you know. Because sometimes He gives us two, three, four times to give it a try. Because if we're not getting it right the first time, he's going to bring us back to take another try. 
Sometimes it's just turning the right direction, turning to the right person and asking a question for help or guidance from a brother or a sister. Verse 13, therefore set I in the lower places behind the wall and on the higher places. I even set the people after after their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your houses. And it came to pass, when our enemies heard that it was known unto us, and God had brought their counsel to naught, that we return all of us to the wall, every one unto his work. So we're seeing here that when our enemy finds out that we're not afraid, we're not afraid of them, and our Lord is with us, start, they start to lose faith because they know just like people in our life that say they don't believe. They keep saying they want proof. They already know the truth. Our lives are the proof. God uses us to share his word, to show the world without a doubt what is the one thing, the one, the one thing no one can rebuke And that's our testimony. What we have lived through, what we went through in our lives, that is the proof. And they see it and they hear it from us. Then one day, all those little seeds that we've been planting, it's going to make a difference. Because eventually, those people will get their eyes open. And they'll see the truth. They'll see God for who he really is the loving Savior. In John 16, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Stand up tall. Keep faith in Jesus, no matter what's coming against. No matter what's coming against you. Verse 16, and it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants wrought in the work and the other half of them held both spears, both the spears, the shields, and the bows, and the armor. And the rulers were behind all the house of Judah, those which built the wall and they that bear burdens with those that, that laid it, every one with one of his hands wrought in the work and with the other hand Held the weapon. So now we see Nehemiah. <laughs> now he's been this leader, like a warrior, knows how to have the people set up, build a watch guard, have the weapons and shields ready, and still, still working on that wall still making sure that wall is being built up so the enemy can't get through. You know, and that's... Same kind of thing in our life. It's just one of those things, we have to keep our guard up. We keep our guard up, asking for the Lord's help, and we keep trying to build that wall, keep ourselves uh, safe from that enemy who's out there always poking at us and trying to find that spot in the wall he can get in. It's just a daily thing. Hebrews 13, 5 through 6 says, Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So 
so we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Very encouraging words for us to remember. When we stand up for our faith, or when we tell someone about our Lord, don't worry about it, about what people are going to think. Just worry about what Jesus thinks of you. I know for a fact that he loves each and every one of us. Verse 18, for the builders, everyone had his sword girded by his side, and so builded he that sounded the trumpet was by me. And I said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, the work is great and large, and we are separated upon the wall, one far from another. In that place, therefore, ye hear the sound of the trumpet, resort ye unto us, our God shall fight for us. So we labored in the work, and half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning till the stars appeared. Likewise, at the same time, said I unto the people, let every one of his servant lodge, <clears throat> lodge within Jerusalem, that in, that in the night they may be a guard to us, and labor on the day. So neither I, nor my brethren, nor my servants, nor the men of the guard which followed me, none of us put off our clothes, saying that every one put them off for washing. So we see that through this chapter, Nehemiah has been, he's been a good example, good example of a leader, of a coach, which I, I think is a, it's a good thing for all of us to learn a little bit from this. Um, they were there helping each other, helping each other to build up that wall that they needed to fix, those things. Um, they watched over each other, helped each other in their time of need. It's, what, it's just a great example of, of that love thy neighbor. In Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 19, verse 19 through 24, Remembering mine affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind, therefore I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed by his, com his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. See, the Lord's mercies new every morning is just such a wonderful thing. I, I thank God every day for him walking, uh, waking me, waking me up and giving me another day, giving me a chance to rely on him, his mercies, because I, I can do nothing without him. You know, and... We do need to remember those things, those things that God has helped us through. He doesn't want us to forget them. He just doesn't want us to dwell upon them. Don't dwell upon the bad things. Just to remember that God has brought you through many trials. And just tell people about it. Encourage others. How wonderful the Lord is to us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for, for being with us this night, Father. And we just thank you for your word. We pray that uh, as we uh, continue through this night and, and through this, this week, we just, uh, you go before us, Father. Guide our way. Help us to uh, just encourage others through the things that you're doing in our lives, Father. We just thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen.